In this motivational video, prolific public speakers Jordan Peterson and David Goggins discuss the topics of self-improvement and how to overcome your psychological limitations. You are watching Fuel Motivation. For more videos from your favorite public speakers, be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. Whatever I wanted, I did. And that's where I started seeing myself get further and further away from my true self. And your true self is found, honestly, in that very uncomfortable zone. I had this haunting voice in the back of my head. We, a lot of us have it. Yeah. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. You knew you could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was gonna be something that I didn't wanna even, even attack. So I was just put it off. But yet you did it. Because it haunted me. Okay. The voice in my head said, you know what, man? You're gonna die never even trying to reach your full potential. I believe in a higher power. Don't know the name, don't know where it's coming from, don't know anything like that. But I believe that this power, and visualize me real quick. Let's say it's a man up there, or a woman, whatever, and they have a chart. And when you're born, they say David Goggins, born February 17, 1975 at 6 a.m. They write the chart down because they can see everything. They know exactly what you're fucking supposed to be. They know what you're supposed to be. You die, you go to so-called heaven. You arrive at heaven, I'm 300 pounds. I retired as an Ecolab guy, which is okay. It's just a job, whatever. I go up there and God looks at me and he shows me my chart. And my chart on there says you're supposed to be a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to weigh 185 pounds. You're supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet, this, this, all this. You see this. And now you're in heaven, you made it to heaven, but you're like, God, God, I was supposed to live that life. I was supposed to live that life. And then you find out that the reason why, because we all think that if we pray on it, if we do this, if we do that, whatever, we don't work, we just, whatever, it's gonna magically happen for us. No, I believe that when I'm all said and done with, my whole job is to outwork the chart. Whatever the fucking chart says about me, the all-knowing power up there, I want to get up there and say, him look at me and say, I know everything. I didn't fucking see this. I didn't fucking see this. I want to feel that. I want to get to the other end of this fucking world and however I'm being judged, whoever's judging me, to look at me and say, I did not fucking no I, I had you at 185 had you at this but all this other shit I was riding as you were living it I want to I want to find more all I can and in that fucking sack of shit you have to dive in that to find more because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself you're not gonna find anything you can live right here on surface man right here on surface so if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're gonna get there and you might see a chart and that chart may tell you who the fuck you should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Now I could live a much better life if I just would have just suffered a little bit more. If I just would have went in that shit and realized I had so much more, but fear and the 40% and living here versus living here, being afraid. Stop me. What could you do to improve yourself? Well, let, let's step one step backwards. The first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. And maybe so others don't have to either. It's something like that. You know, like there's a real injunction at the bottom of it. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, 
you'll pay for it and in a big way and so will the people around you now and you could say well i don't care about that but that's actually not true you actually do care about that because if you're in pain you will care about it and so you do care about it even if it's just that negative way you know um, it's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say well it would be no better if i was out of this it's sort of pain is one of those things that brings the idea that it would be better if it didn't exist along with it. It's incontrovertible. So you get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. Well, so then the question might be, well, how would you go about getting your act together? The point is your best strategic position is how am I insufficient and how can I rectify that? That's what you've got. And the thing is, you are insufficient and you could rectify it. Both of those are within your grasp. If you aim low enough, one of the things. Why you do you do, see that? You, that's another thing you keep saying. Aim low enough. Have a low enough bar. Why do you? Why do you mean that? Well, let's say you've got a kid and you want the kid to improve. You don't set them a bar that's so high that it's impossible for them to attain it. You take a look at the kid and you think, okay, this kid's got this range of skill. Here's a challenge we can throw at him or her that exceeds their current level of skill, but gives them a reasonable probability of success. And so, like I'm saying it tongue in cheek to some degree, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, but if you're, but I'm doing it as an aid to humility. It's like, well, I don't know how to start improving my life. Someone might say that. And I would say, well, you're not aiming low enough. There's something you could do that you are regarding as trivial, that, that, that you could do, that you would do, that would result in an actual improvement. But it's not a big enough improvement for you, so you won't lower yourself enough to take the opportunity. Incremental steps. And, yes. And, so and, this is also what is achieved through exercise. It's one of the most important. Yeah. Well, what do you do when you go and lift weight? Yeah. You don't go and, like, if you haven't right, bench pressed before, you don't put 400 pounds on the damn bar and drop the, and drop the bar through your skull. Right. You know, you think, look, when I started working out when I was a kid, I was, I was weighed about 130 pounds and I was six foot one. I was a thin kid and I smoked a lot. I wasn't in good shape. I wasn't in good physical shape. And I went to the gym and it was bloody embarrassing, you know, and people would come over and help me with the goddamn weights. Here's how you're supposed to use this. You know, it was humiliating. And maybe I was pressing 65 pounds or something at that point, you know, but what am I gonna do? I'm gonna lift up 150 pounds and injure myself right off the bat? No, I had to go in there and strip down and put my skinny goddamn self in front of the mirror and think, son of a bitch, there's all these monsters in the gym who've been lifting weights for 10 years and I'm struggling to get 50 pounds off the bar. Tough luck for me but I could lift 50 pounds. And it wasn't very, very long until I could lift 75. And well, you know how it goes. But, and I never injured myself when I was weightlifting. And the reason for that was I never pushed myself past where I knew I could go. And I pushed myself a lot. You know, I gained 35 pounds of muscle in about three years in, in university. I kind of had to quit because I was eating so goddamn much I couldn't stand it. It was eating like six meals a day. It was just taking up too much time. But there's a humility in determining what it is that the wretched creature that you are can actually manage. Aim low. And I, I don't mean don't aim. And I don't mean don't aim up. But you have to accept the fact that you can set yourself a goal that you can attain. And there's not going to be much glory in it to begin with. Because if you're not in very good shape, the goal that you could, could attain tomorrow isn't very glorious. But it, it's a hell of a lot better than nothing, and it beats the hell out of bitterness, and it's way better than blaming someone else. It's way less dangerous, and you could do it. And what's cool about it, there's a statement in the New Testament, it's called the Matthew Principle, and economists use it to describe how the economy in the world works. To those who have everything, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything will be taken. It's like what's very pessimistic in some sense, because it means that as you start to fail, you fail more and more rapidly. But it also means that as you start to succeed, you succeed more and more rapidly. And so you take an incremental step and, well, now you can lift 55 pounds instead of 52.5 pounds. You think, well, what the hell is that? It's like, it's one step on a very long journey. And so it's, it, and it starts to compound on you. So a small step today means, puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And then that puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And you do that for two or three years, man, you're starting to stride.